Oh shoot, we got a rat in the garage. We got a rat problem, player. Oh, shoot. <laughs> so Braxton's been hogging this thing. Oh, we'll insert some video right schmear. So that's Braxton ripping on this thing. They broke one belt because they've been running it through some mud. You can see they put some hours on this puppy. They got a chrome propeller now, prop. And it's got a few little nicks, but all in all, it's in really good shape. How do you think what do you think now that you've owned it for what, six, eight months? It's a blast. What we're gonna be doing today is this is I don't know what kind of engine this is, but it's a Hemi. Looks like anyways. So I think I have everything to put a billet flywheel, fire 265 cam or hot 265 cam, billet rod, some chromoly push rods, and a Makuni, and we're gonna build a header that basically comes up, goes down, and goes into the water down there. I think that's gonna be pretty sick. And we'll make a brace that comes off of this to mount the muffler to. Will that muffler hit anything going down the prop like that? No, I mean, could it be turning with the motor? I mean, just like dragging the ground in you. Like how, uh, when you get it mud, where what what it do be doing though? Uh, it's. I mean, we can end it. How deep is this in the water? Is what I'm asking. Uh, this I don't feel like is very much. Now this is like bogging. Bogging deep. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm yanking on it. That's what I was saying. If I run the header down into the water there and left it like flush with the bottom of that, would it be in the water? Uh, yeah. Because it needs to be or it's going to be louder than death with a straight pipe. They sound awful with a straight pipe, but any hoosies. Oh, did you graduate college yet? No, not yet. You get signed with MLB yet? Not yet. Oh, Four shoot. Years, dude. <laughs> oh, shoot. Go Power Sports has these heavy duty uh, fan shrouds, and these things are, I would say, three times thicker than the factory one. Some beef cake. So we're going to run that puppy on there so Braxton don't die. Uh, we do not recommend pulling the governor off and leaving the stock flywheel. If you have a Tillotson, uh, they say that it's okay. So what we're wanting to do, I think I have an old Tillotson outside on something. We just gotta, we can't do it today. It's raining and jump. And we'll pull that electric start Tillotson stock flywheel and slap on this. Uh, so, and a, a heavy flywheel, just so you know, keeps an engine from bogging, uh, keeps the inertia up. So a light flywheel helps it rev faster. So a cast fly will actually help you a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm not looking forward to taking this part, but because yeah. I can't remember how hard it is, I think we gotta just take his plate off, pour bolts and hook throttle. We're gonna go ahead and pull the muffler and the breather box here. So uh, let's get started. You got it. Oh shoot, Bob your uncle. <laughs> Trash. 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 No. And then just throw that muffler away. Hey me that sure. in that socket. So we we'll, we might upgrade it even more down the road. This is just what we're doing for now because it's all I got parts for. We'll be getting rid of the stock carb. We're gonna dyno it after, but not before, because this thing should make around six and a half horsepower. We know the numbers of a stock engine ish, so we're just gonna call it that. Too much work putting on dyno fly. Oh yeah. This is a little son of a flank steak. This is a little bit different style head, like than most Hemi's. One thing that looks cool is the fins are super thin on the head, which means it'll dissipate heat a little better. Look at his belt riding all the way against there. That means the I don't know. That means I probably I put it on in the water and I probably just didn't get out. <laughs> <laughs> So yeah, that, that's gonna wear that belt quicker. But, so loosen the tensioner down there. So I would assume we can take these off. And the only thing is when we put this back together, we're basically gonna slide this engine up and bolt this up first and then tighten these, then do the bottom bolts. We dropped the washer down inside this thing, so be careful. 
pull the engine back i got the pulley yeah okay so what we're going to do is hold that from following i'm going to run a zip tie right with it so our pulley won't pull that might suck putting it back on but it shouldn't be that bad all right i'm going to pull this key and you're okay we do have an engine now let's let Braxton tear this thing apart. Jeepers, mister, you're really strong. All right, I'm gonna drain the oil really quick. Oh, it looks pretty good. So you didn't change the oil? You had? I don't think so. Hmm. It don't look horrible. You know, we like to run them hard. Take the best care of everything we are. <laughs> we are gonna be adding a magnetic oil dipstick this time too. That'd be really nice. Up to resale value on the streets. So this engine had a plastic cam gear, so that's going to be nice to replace. Uh, and they do plastic cam gears for noise, and it keeps like noise and just wear, I guess, down in the engines. But I do not be liking them though. Great. So now I got to test the uh, journal size to see if it matches a Hemi or a non-Hemi. And I'm assuming stuff's going to match a Hemi, but I don't know. This is a different type Hemi setup. Uh, it did have a super thin head gasket, which is real nice. Um, that ups the compression over a firing gasket. So we'll be putting another thin sheet metal head gasket on it. Those are like ten thousandths of an inch. This is what I was talking about. The thins are extremely thin compared. to grab another head. So this is a just an old head. This one's got a lot thinner style um, fins on it, so it's going to stay cooler better. So that's a pretty cool note. So all we're going to do with this is pull the spark plug, put a better spark plug in it. We're going to get rid of uh, these dowels and we got to replace the valve springs with some 26 pound, I think is what our cam calls for. So I'm going to measure the cam, get everything ready. We got to pull the flywheel still on this engine. I think Brack's going to do that uh, here in just a second. And then we can proceed with removing the governor bits and putting this thing back together. A few moments later. So we just tested some stuff and it's going to use a Go Power Sports Fire 265 NHP cam. This is the non Hemi cam. So it's a Hemi head, but it uses a non Hemi style cam. Then for the rod, it's going to use a Go Power Sports 6254. This is a Predator rod because a Predator, Hemi, and non Hemi take the same rod, but the um, the GX200s are different. The only thing, that's for the crankshaft journal size, by the way. It's, there's about, I don't know, five to 10 thousandths different uh, between a GX200 and a Hemi style rod. The only thing I have to check now is wrist pin size because this does have a Hemi style piston and we gotta make sure the wrist pin fits this billet rod. So that's our next thing. So with the piston, you got this little groove here. I'm gonna stick a pick in there. Put your thumb over it so it don't go flying across the room. And then just pop that clip out of there. Then you only gotta do one side. You can push that wrist pin out, grab it. Oh yeah. That's a good, good fit. That's about a perfect fit. But you can hear when it hits where his rod has already broke this thing in some. So 
this is the rod everything will be linked if you have uh, one of these mud motor kits then i definitely recommend using these parts uh, we've linked everything down below so it's super easy to just click on the links and buy these products this uh, i mean this is like a kind of a merge between a hemi and a non-hemi block the only thing we don't know is our flywheel because what we got to do is pull our key out of our crank once we get our crank back installed and we'll cover this we'll clean it really well and cover it with some blue dicum lube or uh, even a sharpie works you just cover the whole tapered area side on a billet flywheel and turn it and it'll scrape off and you can see how much it's mating to that taper to see what flywheel it fits uh, and then we're also going to knock off this governor gear here in a minute so that's our main things and then we can finish getting the governor parts out this arm up here i like to knock them completely out instead of messing with that clip it's a super big pain so I'll do that while Braxton is cleaning the side cover, uh, the gasket off of it. If you're new to these style videos, we have all kinds of builds on our channel. Uh, make sure to check those out. We've done mild to wild on these things and we will be dyno in this once we're done. So we'll be able to see the power difference between this. And we didn't dyno it before, but these engines should make around six and a half to seven max on horsepower normally it's give or take you know it could be 6.35 up to 6.7 stock is what they normally run just prying open this governor arm we've showed all this on our channel no need to go in depth about this particular build pop this clip off then we can push our governor arm down through make sure you get the washer that runs behind it really important you don't want to leave that in there then we don't even have to tap this hole actually. A quarter inch bolt will thread itself in there and tap its own threads. We'll lay our block down like this. And then we're gonna hit this area here. We'll show it up uh, close on screen. We're gonna hit this rod and knock it down into the block. It'll knock that whole governor gear out. We don't have to mess with getting the clip out. And there we go. And again, with this governor gear, make sure to get the washer that runs behind it. If you can see, normally you'd have to sit there and fiddle with that little tiny clip, and it is a super big pain. I would rather just knock this entire thing out and thread a quarter inch bolt. And then we thread it down in there, pull it back out, put red Loctite on it, and they're sealed for good. You can do both this one and this top one here. So we're going to have to pull the starter real quick to get to uh, the oil sensor and people used to back in the day always complain about us removing the oil sensor. The reason we do is that's only there for if you're running this on like a pressure washer or something. If it tilts over it'll kick the engine off. It's not for anything else. So don't get your panties in a wad. <laughs> So this is a perfect for a 7 16 fine thread tap. We're gonna tap that, make sure to clean all your garbage out of the block, and then red lock type, a short, like a one inch, 7 16 fine thread bolt in there with a lock washer. We use red lock type and the lock washer. Actually keep a tap just for this. Man, that's real nice. All right, we're going to clean our block out now. Okay, so we got that tapped, and we're going to put that bolt in. But on the head side, on the jug side, let's uh, hold that block just like that. So you can see that little hole in the center. That hole is to let oil flow back down through the valve cover back into the block to return it. Uh, and then this one allows vapor and stuff to get up and oil your valves. So we're going to drill that little tiny hole out in the center there. I hope you can see that. Let me grab a flashlight. So if you can see, there's three holes. The, the lifter holes, and then that one little one shining bright is the one we're gonna drill out to a quarter of an inch. Bam, drilled it out. And now that's gonna let a lot more flow through there. It's gonna help a blow by, basically. Okay, I've done slapped on the rod we've already checked our oil clearance i'm going to install the piston 
Uh, I'm gonna install it for Braxton because I'm a sweetheart. And then he's going to do the torquing and whatnot because it, it sucks. <laughs> and I've lubed the cylinder with Amsoil assembly lube. This stuff is like butter for your engine. If your engine's bread, that's the butter. There we go. These rings are a thousand times better than the way I used to do it with the old ring compressor. It was garbage. Again, if you want an in-depth on this, you literally follow the same exact guide as a as any of my other small engine builds. All this stuff is exactly the same. Make sure the rod is fully coated. We're going to also go ahead and put our rod bearing in our rod cap. Douse of lube on it. I'm pretty heavy with this stuff because it's high zinc and uh, it's just good to have more of it than than less honestly so we get that seated up against the crank and put our rod cap on with the dipper pointing down and then i can get braxton to tighten these bolts up basically we're going to get them all the way snug and then once we snug them we can go through the torque process and we'll tell you how we do that though so Braxton's gonna start torquing it. We're starting at 60 inch pounds and gonna work our way up to 150. That's, whoa, that's snapping. No, that's it? Yeah. Okay, I was waiting on a click. So you over torque that one, but it's fine. Just don't do that on the higher numbers, basically. Yeah. When it clicks, that's it. I was waiting on a click, click, not a... No. I only click once. Okay, now adjust up 20. So you're gonna to go to 80 inch pounds. Yeah, them, them uh, 12 points are sometimes a pain. So we're going up, we're starting at 60, going up 20 inch pounds at a time until we get to 150. Then we're gonna break it back loose and then retorque again because it, what it's doing is stretching the bolts. Um, and then we're gonna to torque to 170 if you're using engine oil as lube on the threads of the bolts or 150 if you're using Molly lube. See if Braxton blew it up. Yep. Just blew it up. Yep. Unfreaking little. All that new. That assembly lube is goofy. So he's going to put the lifters in. Oh, that's real nice. That stuff's going to come out like lava. Hot lava. That's still slippery, though. Boom. Boom. Good night. What's that even mean? <laughs> what? That it appears to be great. It won't go. Oh, it great! Just hammer it on. Hey, <laughs> <laughs> your face! Whoa! Freaking school of hard knocks, dude. All right, put those bolts in, baby. Yeah, do that. Nah, you might as well stop. So that's crankshaft walk. Every engine has it, or one of them. So what we're gonna do is, is we're gonna lean this thing sideways. Okay. Hmm. Sometimes the cam wants to come out with you. So online you can buy thick and thin shims. We're gonna start off with one thick shim on there first and then next this time just torque like this one and this one and then we'll reach sure, it you can make them not so sharp yeah that's oh awesome. my goodness yeah it's a little better i think that'll be about right okay now you can go ahead and torque the rest of them i got you a little gift please do yeah huh? So, why well, have we talked like this all day long? <laughs> I don't know. It's like we're in a rap video. 
<laughs> Trap dough, don't even know. <laughs> We're doing a um, magnetic oil dipstick in this thing after we put we're gonna be putting some Amsoil break-in oil in this. We're gonna run it on the dyno with this and then change the oil after a few good running, like 30 minutes where the run time is what you normally break your engines in with. And this has high zinc as well as our uh, assembly lube did. So this ain't gonna be zinced up. <laughs> <I'll say laughs> Don't make me laugh, player. <laughs> I'm trying to pour this. So I just did one of the valves to show Braxton. Go ahead and spin her down there, baby daddy. So this is a uh, ATV style spring compressor you can get off Amazon. Links are always down below. This is the handiest tool you'll ever buy if you're gonna do these engines. So it just compresses the spring. Let me just rotate this so they can see it. And then, oh, it's, well, that's plenty. A uh, magnetic screwdriver right there. And you use a magnetic screwdriver to get the keepers. It, you don't have to hold the head. It'll hold itself in there until you loosen it, that is. So he got the keepers out. Now he can loosen it, pop it out. We're running 26 pound springs from Go Power Sports. These are the white stripe. That's what our 265 cam calls for. All right, pop that cap off, pop it in there. Let me see if we need that. Now we're gonna leave it. Okay, slide it back over. Yep, yeesh. We used to do this with a freaking screwdriver and it was awful, wasn't it? You remember them days? Make you wanna punch a church, baby. Now, I put a goobity gop of that on it. Uh, so I put some assembly lube on it because it's oh, way and sticky. Gosh. That's good, that's Not fine. A lot. No, it's, it's there to use, you know what I'm saying? And then just stick it on the end of your flathead and don't touch everything that's metal. And it, yeah, put it down there like this and I get this pick and there's a lip on there. Yeah, you're pushing it. Oh gosh, push it on down. Sometimes you gotta push the head. Yeah, that's what it is. The head to the side. Oh gosh. It's a pain sometimes. Right there. Right there. Now do this other side. And then use this pick to slide it all the way down. Or that oh gosh okay yep you can push it down a little bit more okay now rotate it out and it should grab I'm gonna hold this so the camera can keep oh yeah and then boom Bob's your uncle Bob is your uncle indeed that's real nice Okay, so we get the spark plug pulled out and we're gonna upgrade the spark plug anyway, so we need to pull it. That's a real nice spark plug. <laughs> it did it bounce up in the church. We want it to like have a good scrape. Okay, so we're gonna break these loose and yeah, it's a huge area. And you're gonna get more horsepower the more you set these. So if you if it was like at five thousandths, which this probably is five or six thousandths, then you tighten it up, you're getting that much more lift out of your cam. So it's really important that you do this to get maximum lift. So we'll set this again. We have videos on this on our channel. You don't need to go in depth on this. So we got the valve lash set and then I colored the crankshaft with a Sharpie and then I took the new billet flywheel uh, that we have in this box and this is a uh let's see the speedway billet flywheel from go power sports it is six six nine five so we take this flywheel with no lapping compound and we spin it on the crankshaft and what that does is tell us how much of the taper is touching and this one looks to be the right flywheel so if you have this engine six six nine five flywheel on go power sports fits we did the speedway one which means we have the short fins so there's even less drag on this uh, flywheel so now we can put valve grinding compound. We have our old nasty tub sitting right there and do the same thing and spin it to make the two services, then clean it all off and torque it down to spec. So we'll show you when we're torquing it. Let's hammer down. 
Go. Yep. Here we go. And I use my five table. Uh, if you, of course, most people don't have this, you can clamp it down with some good C clamps. It's a lot of force on there, so make sure it's good. And when we're doing this, we use an old CVT pulley. I use an old CVT pulley that I've drilled holes in so I can bolt the crankshaft steel so we can torque that down. Okay guys, so the boat motor is all done and ready to be dyno. We just gotta throw a header on it for the dyno. We have a special one for it. So the next episode, we'll run this on the dyno to see what kind of numbers it makes. Super excited to see that. Sorry we didn't do it in this video. It's already pretty long, almost 30 minutes long. So we wanted to end this here. So uh, stay tuned. Next week we'll be running this on the dyno, building a temporary header. Um, Mud Skipper said they do got some stainless steel headers coming out for these engines and I don't have any stainless so we're just going to build mine out of mild steel. Of course it's going to rust uh, being that it's going to be in the water but it'll be okay for the time being so stay tuned. Next week it's coming. Make sure to check out all the links for the parts that we use if you have a mud skipper kit uh, with this uh, Hemi style engine. Make sure to check out those links. They will be the parts that we tested and uh, they seem to fit on our engine. So put your guesses down below in the comment section what you think this engine is going to make horsepower and torque i'm guessing i don't know torque uh, i haven't ran the dyno enough to really know what these engines uh kind of make you know with the performance upgrades but i'm going to guess around 12 to 13 horsepower let's see what happens uh really excited so thank you guys for watching we love you and uh we'll see you on the next one god bless